Hello, Algebra 2 students. So today we are going to begin our unit on polynomials. Um, in today's part, we are going to describe them, like how to name them, um, do some uh, arithmetic with polynomials, like addition, subtraction, and multiplication. We're going to save division for a separate day. And then we're going to talk about polynomial and behavior. So if we start uh, by describing polynomials, so this is our naming part. Uh, so again, we're going to describe how to name them. Uh, so we're going to talk about two options here. So we're going to describe by uh, degree, classification by degree first, and then by type second. So if we go by degree, if it has a degree of zero, it's just a constant. A constant. There are no variables in it. So an example would be like a 5. If your uh, polynomial has a degree of 1, that means it's linear. So it could be an example of something like 3x minus 1. Now maybe I should stop first in a second. Hopefully you remember what standard form looks like. Standard form is when you write your polynomial out and when you have it in order, you have the highest degree to the lowest degree. Okay, so notice I have 3x minus 1. The degree on the x is 1. The degree on the negative 1 is 0. So it's again in standard form. A quadratic, we just finished doing that unit. So an example might be something like x squared plus 2x plus 1. So again, the highest degree here is 2, so that means it's a quadratic. A cubic might be something like uh, 2x cubed plus 7x, something like that. So again, the highest degree is 3, so that's a cubic polynomial. A quartic would be degree 4. So maybe I have something like x to the fourth plus 3x cubed, I don't know, plus 6, something like that. So again, my highest degree is 4, so that's a quartic polynomial. Um, for degree 5, we have a quintic. So maybe we have something like negative 10x to the fifth uh, minus 4x to the fourth. Uh, maybe let's do a 7x squared, something like that. So again, the highest degree is 5, so that is a quintic polynomial. And anything beyond 5, you know, technically there is a name for, so we're not going to focus on it. So if I have like an x to the 7th, I would say that's a 7th degree polynomial because it has an exponent of 7 that's beyond 5. Okay, so moving on to classify by type, this is the number of terms. So if I have a monomial, that means there's only one term. So maybe I just have a 2x. If I have two terms, then it's a, bon a binomial. So maybe I have like x squared minus 4. Hopefully you see there's two terms to it. If I have a trinomial, that means there's three terms. So maybe I have something like x squared plus 3x uh, plus 2. So again, there's one, two, three terms in it. If it's a four-term polynomial, maybe we have uh, 2x to the third minus 4x squared plus 7x minus 1. Okay, if we have five-term polynomial, we would have, again, five terms in it. So maybe we have something like negative 3x to the fourth plus 6x cubed, let's say minus 5x plus 2x minus 9. So again, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. And as we keep going, you just state the number of terms you have. So if we put them together, so if I look at, if I highlight a couple, so this 2x, I would call that a linear monomial because it's a degree of 1 and there's one term. If I look at the second one, the x, the x squared minus 4, that would be a quadratic binomial because it has a degree of 2 and there are two terms. If I look at the third one, this would be a quadratic trinomial because it's a degree of 2 and 3 terms. If I look at the next one, this would be a cubic four-term polynomial because it's a degree of 3 and there are four terms. And I could keep going. So again, that is how you describe polynomials both by degree and by type. So next, we're going to practice a little polynomial arithmetic. So again, it's titled Arithmetic with Polynomials. So in the first one, if I am subtracting, what you need to make sure you do is distribute that negative. 
So I'm going to have 9x plus 1, and then I'm going to distribute the negative to both, so that's going to be a plus 7x squared. That's going to be a minus 4x, and then finally a minus 10. So once we've distributed our negative for our subtraction problem, and then we're going to combine like terms and write it in standard form. So I'm going to do kind of two at the same time here. So if I'm going to write it in standard form, I want the highest degree first. So it looks like in our problem, the highest degree is the x squared, and there's nothing to combine that with. So I'm going to start with 7x squared. Next would be the degree of 1. So I have a 9x and a negative 4x. That makes a positive 5x. And then last but not least, I have a 1 and a negative 10, and that makes a negative 9. So this is my final answer. Notice it is written in standard form. And if I wanted to name it, I would say this is a quadratic, and it has three terms. So it's a quadratic trinomial. Next, let's look at an addition problem. So I have negative 5x squared minus 9x plus 6 plus 6x squared plus 10. So since it's an addition problem, I'm going to rewrite it without the parentheses. So again, we have negative 5x squared minus 9x plus 6 plus 6x squared plus 10x. So what I want to do next is to write it in standard form and have uh, like terms combined. So if I start with... Um, the highest degree is 2. I have a negative 5x squared and a positive 6x squared. When I combine them, that gives me a 1x squared, or just x squared. Next, um, I only have the negative 9x. There's no other terms with an x in it, so minus 9x. And then last but not least, I have 6 plus 10, which is 16. So again, if I were to name this, this would again be a quadratic trinomial. My highest degree is 2, and there are three terms, so that makes it a trinomial. If I continue on to now some multiplication examples. So when you're doing multiplication, you're going to be doing the distributive property. Okay. So if I begin, I'm going to take 3x times 3x squared, which makes 9x cubed. 3x times 4x is 12x squared. 3x times 6 is 18x, and then now I have to distribute the negative 1 as well. So negative 1 times 3x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 1 times 4x is negative 4x, and negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. So now that I've multiplied that out, I want to combine any like terms and then make sure it's written in standard form. So my highest degree is x cubed, and I only have one of those terms, so we're going to start with 9x cubed. Um, the next degree would be x squared. I have a 12x squared minus 3x squared. That makes a positive 9x squared. Continuing on here, I have a positive 18x and a negative 4x. That makes a positive 14x. And then last but not least, um, we have a minus 6. Okay, so if I put a box around this, this would be my answer in standard form. And again, if I were to name it, this would be a cubic because the degree is 3. And it would be a cubic polynomial with four terms. One, two, three, four terms in it. Uh, take your time. Do not rush because this is where you'll make a mistake. Maybe you mess up a sign or you miss multiply or miss add. So just take your time. Okay, on the last one of this type. So we have negative x squared plus 3x minus 4 times x squared minus 5x minus 1. So we have a trinomial times another trinomial. So again, we're going to distribute. So again, we're going to take our time. So first, I'm going to distribute the negative x squared. So negative x squared times x squared is negative x to the fourth. Negative x squared times negative 5x is a positive 5x cubed. Negative x squared times negative 1 is a positive x squared. Okay, next I'm going to distribute the 3x. 3x times x squared is 3x cubed. 3x times negative 5x is negative 15x. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. And then now, finally, we're going to distribute um, our negative 4. Negative 4 times x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times negative 5x is a positive 20x. And then negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. 
So now that we've distributed, we are going to combine like terms and write it in standard form. So if I'm looking at my problem, I only have one term with an x to the fourth in it. So I'm going to start with negative x to the fourth. And to help me in organizational purposes, I'm going to cross it out every time I use it so I can see what I have left. Uh, next would be the, the, the x cubed. So we have a 5x cubed, a 3x cubed. So 5x cubed plus 3x cubed is 8x cubed. And again, I'm going to cross that out so I know I've used them. Then we're going to have an x squared. So I have an x squared. Oh, and this one, honestly, I forgot. That should be a 15x squared. I almost forgot about that, if you were noticing that. So I have an x squared minus 15x squared minus 4x squared. So that's going to be a minus, um, what is that? Minus 18x squared. Okay, I'm going to cross that out. We use those. Um, next, I have a negative 3x and a positive 20x. So that is going to give me a positive 17x. And then last but not least, I have that plus 4. So this, if I were to name it, would be a quartic polynomial with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, if I wanted to name it. So again, take your time, be careful. Okay, the other part of today's lesson, like I said, was going to be end behavior. So we have this table here to help us as we go through these problems. So if my, the degree of my polynomial, that's the highest degree, remember, if it is an even number, and let's say the lead coefficient is negative. So pretending I might have like a negative four x to the six. That's an even degree and again, a negative lead coefficient. The end behavior is gonna end down in both directions. Now there might be something else going on in the middle, but it's going, as you approach the left and approach the right, um, you're approaching negative infinity. So the way I would write it, if I'm looking at the left, as x approaches negative infinity, your f of x or y also approaches negative infinity. If I look to the right, that would be as x approaches positive infinity, f of x or y will also approach negative infinity. So that's if you have an even degree and a negative lead coefficient. If you have an even degree, but your lead coefficient is positive, then it's going to go up on both ends. Now again, you might have something weird going on in the middle, but again, it's going to the end behavior, it's going toward positive infinity in both of those directions. So again, as I look to the left, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. And if I look to the right, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x again approaches positive infinity, because again, it's going up from both directions. Now, if we look at the last two, this is like doing the disco, they're going different things at each end. So these are for odd degrees. So if my degree is odd for either one of these, Okay, if it starts low and ends high, that means your lead coefficient is positive. So as I look to the left, as x approaches negative infinity, again, the graph is going down, so f of x or y approaches negative infinity as well. As I look to the right of the graph, as x approaches positive infinity, again, that's the right part, what happens to your y's? They're going upwards, so f of x approaches positive infinity as well. And now, finally, if your lead coefficient is negative with an odd degree, it goes the other direction. It starts high and ends low. So as I look to the left of the graph, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity, since again, it's going up to the left side. And then finally, if I look at the right, so that would be as x approaches positive infinity, f of x would approach negative infinity. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna pull up the Delta Math assignment. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about uh, for the different types of problems, and um, then you can get started on your assignment. So for your assignments today, this is your Delta Math, and you're gonna be doing both of these assignments here. So you're gonna classify polynomials and then arithmetic, and then you're gonna do end behavior. So let's do take a look at a couple of them together uh, to make sure you're comfortable with these. So on the first set, all you have to do is rewrite 
your polynomial in standard form. So for this one, again, we're going highest degree to lowest degree. So you would start with the 10x cubed, and then you would do um, x squared next, and then the minus one at the end. So again, you're going highest degree to lowest degree. If we look at the next one, this would be polynomial um, vocabulary. So what you're doing is you're looking at this one. Okay, so I would rewrite it in standard form first. So this one would be negative nine x to the fifth minus one. So this expression represents a, and then you'd have a drop down bar. Since it's a fifth degree, hopefully you would pick quintic. Sorry about that writing, it looks a little messy, but quintic polynomial, and it has one, two terms. It says the constant term is, so what's the constant? Hopefully you're gonna type in the negative one. The leading term, you're gonna put the whole leading term here, so you're gonna type in negative nine x to the fifth, and the leading coefficient in this case would just be the negative nine. So that's how you would approach those. Um, the next you have adding or subtracting, so we just did that as well. And then you're gonna have multiplication, so you're gonna have some where you have a binomial times a trinomial, and then you're gonna have others where you have a trinomial times a trinomial, and that's fine. The other assignment is the end behavior, which we just finished that table in the notes. So if we do end behavior graphically, this is just looking at a graph and figuring out the end behavior. So if we do this one together here, if I can scroll down here, there we go, that's a little better. Okay, so here's my graph. So as I look to the left of the graph, as x approaches negative infinity, what does the graph do on the left? It's going up. So as x approaches negative infinity, y should approach positive infinity. So I can narrow it down to one of these two because it says as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity in both, okay? So now when I look to the right of the graph, well, what happens on the right? It's going down. So you can say that the y would approach negative infinity. So therefore my answer would be the second one here. So you're gonna have a couple of those you need to complete. And then you have uh, some same kind of concept, but it's algebraically. So if we do this one together here, this is based on that table. So hopefully you wrote it down and you can have something to look back at. So on this one, if I write it in standard form, first off, I would have 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. Okay, so what is my degree? Hopefully you're gonna say it's two, that's the highest one. Two is an even number. So if I have an even degree, and my lead coefficient is three, and that is positive. So again, looking at my chart, if I have a lead coefficient that's positive and it's even, remember it ends like this. That's my end behavior, it's going up on both sides. So if I look to the left, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity, so it's gonna be one of these two. And then if I look to the right of the graph, um, remember, it's going to go up as well, so as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity too. So my answer would be the third one. So again, your assignment for today is to complete your Delta Math assignment. And as always, if you have questions, please let me know. And one quick other statement, uh, make sure you have it done. It is due Friday by 11.59. Otherwise, you do not get credit for it. Take care.